Hey, 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 everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are or whenever you're watching this live or this video, rather. I am so excited for this week. Um, and for the last three, four weeks, I am saying the same thing. You might be thinking, okay, that seems to be her um, signature statement. That's not. But for the last four or five weeks, I'm so excited. I'm excited for all the guests but, and experts. But the experts I've been looking for for so long and they come, they say hi, and I, I get so excited because I can just drill them, can't I? So that, that excites me a lot. I love to ask questions. So how did I end up with to Toby is like, I put a post in one of the groups and I asked, is there anyone who could talk? I was not positive at all, I must say. Um, I was not positive anyone would come come back to me because I've been failed many times. I wasn't like, okay, prepare for the worst. And when Toby asked me and I was like, oh yeah, I've got a game. And he said, I'm not available on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday or Thursday. And I said, no, no later. I'll get him on Tuesday. That's why we are here. And we are, I am so grateful for Toby to come on this show and I'm going to ask him all the questions which has been there at the back of my mind and I know a few of the questions which was given to me by you so I would be asking those questions as well. Toby runs um, uh, or he's a curator and director of uh, TEDx, TED, TED Talk um, franchisee TEDx Brighton. When he said that Ah, I now I know how I can place you because a couple of my friends um who've uh, done a TED talk um they on 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 his platform. So I was so excited and I, I think I've been uh, stalking him since he said yes. I don't know whether he regrets saying yes, but I'm not bothered about those things anyway. Um so let me bring him on the screen and ask all the questions and he runs to startups i don't know i've got to find out whether it's a startup or not but he runs two wonderful um companies as well and he's got a toddler who is um who is not well i was told and that makes me even more guiltier but I, and i i i'm okay i'm okay hey what we've got to love the life right so let me bring him on hey toby thank you very much <laughs> really 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 appreciate that i'm really sorry, sorry to hear um your girl uh, your toddler or your daughter is not well she's fine don't worry she's uh, being dramatic <laughs> <laughs> she'll be all right she'll be all right um so tell me a little bit about yourself and then uh, um, my grilling starts uh right okay well yes um my name's toby um i live in or if not near very uh, brighton and i've been running tedx brighton for i've been working on tedx brighton as a volunteer for nearly eight years now um and uh running the show so to speak for four or five years depending on whether you count this year because <laughs> we haven't done it this year uh, but that's a story for for later on in our discussion i suspect and uh, alongside that i also run a handful of businesses uh, primarily a uh, content marketing consultancy called Content Club, um, um, but most recently I've started a software company as well called PosterWorks, um, uh, and that is in its infancy but growing fast. I hope. Uh, and um, in addition to those things, I also did a lot of work with our with local uh, youth charities as well. So my partner runs a youth refugee charity, and I work with with them a couple of days or hours a week, depending on the given week. Um, running a young oh, leader program. I am program. interested to want to know about that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, and then I'm, uh, last year I was made a trustee for, for Brighton Youth Centre as well. So um, I've got my hands well and truly in the in the, in the the sort of youth services space in, in, in Brighton as well now. Um, so that's me uh, in, in a relatively short nutshell. Oh, that's good. That's, it's, you've given me so many things to ask about. I am eternally inquisitive that's a posh word of being nosy uh, <laughs> i always go with so, the posh word whenever there's a choice <laughs> <laughs> yes never uh, when i used to be in between contracts i used to say um sorry in between in between contracts instead of saying i'm jobless 
<laughs> so I, I am I'm good with the posh words, at least um, on the word side of it. So now the very first question is, I, I will come back to the content club because that, that interests me very much. And I am a software girl or techie girl. So your poster works is, intrigues me as well. But very first thing is, mm. how did you, how, how come a TEDx franchisee is mm. long running? And I know most most of the city ones do run longer uh, than mm. uh, the smaller new newer ones. How because the curation or a, as a curator you need to renew the membership every year. Mm. Um, and what is the magic? And how can you make, um, I know TEDx Brighton is one of the best um, franchisees uh, around, or at least that's what I heard. I mean, <laughs> from, from your smirk, I, I'm fully in doubt, but that's that's okay. I take it you're a perfectionist who so you wanted to make it even more better. So tell us about it. How, what is the secret? And how did you end up being a TEDx curator? Or direct. Well, the the, 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 the secret the secret to, to carrying a good TEDx franchise is the team, um, and one of the the biggest challenges that you have is to you know is keeping volunteers on consistently. Um, yeah. You know, I've got you know a handful of really really um, capable, committed, loyal, passionate volunteers that really 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 make it happen. Um, but yeah. you know, for every 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 great and uh, every great and committed volunteer that I have, I've got ten more that <laughs> that have been and gone. And uh, and this this applies. You know, what I'm about to tell you as well applies very much to like how we go through the speaker process and what makes for a good speaker and so on as well. But um, you know, I've worked in the events industry for a long time and, and organized lots of different kinds of events of shapes and sizes, and um, uh obviously there's what you know I, I affectionately call sexy ted and you know it, 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 there there is a there is a brand to it that attracts people and uh, and that's both applies to audiences speakers and uh and volunteers alike um, and in my experience uh, it is the the volunteers and the speakers that are that that, that are uh, solely attracted to the sexy ted thing <laughs> <laughs> that don't that don't see the distance uh, and it's the ones that do just simply see it as from a volunteer perspective it's the ones that a see it as something that can contribute successfully to our local community uh, yeah. and b the ones that just see it as an event and an enjoyable event to work on uh, and 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 can can put their, their sexy ted ambitions aside um uh, so with that it's about finding people that just really 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 see it for what it is which is connecting good stories and ideas and moments uh to to a, to our local audience and community uh, and if you can commit to that idea um then and as a as the person leading that team if you can find the right people that, that believe in that idea yeah. And connect with that way of working. That's what keeps the franchise alive. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would, I would completely agree. I used to be area director for a nonprofit, um, educate leadership and education organization, mm. to Toastmasters, um, couple of three mm. years ago, two years ago. Uh, it is not easy to have a team of people uh, with with the same goal um, as as you and making it look like effortless it, it it is so hard to ask their time at the same time they should be willing to give the time as mm. well so mm. i know it's it's not going to be an easy one so you've got you highlighted the team and also there is another would speaker coach um become a team or do they sit outside the team well, interestingly, we've been looking at that in more detail for what would have been this year, but now next year. And we've taken the advantage yeah. of not having an event this year to, to, to focus on a few key areas of how we improve yes. the event. So just a bit of background, like TEDx Brighton, uh, you know, TEDx events, I think, launched in 2010 or 2011, I think. Um, yes. And um, uh, and we launched in 2012, I think. So we're, we are one of the, the oldest 
and longest running in that respect um and 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 um uh minus a handful of other larger events in bigger cities one of the largest yeah. as well i think we were up to about i think 1600 was our audience last year um which Ooh, is quite sizable most yeah most tedx events is only licensed to to, to have a uh, hundred people or less in the audience as well so you have to yeah. have uh, you have to be qualified through their through ted's scheme to to do to do any more than that um yeah. sorry one moment, i'm just going to turn the heating off in my my room it's getting a bit hot um yeah um but 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 um uh i mean it is uh, a te sexy ted so it has to get hot <laughs> yeah. what, what well you yeah well i think the be? brand carries, obviously <laughs> people 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 strive don't they for for, for it and I must yeah. admit, like it, 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 it's something that I now look out for as something as a bit of a, a turn off in terms yeah. of bringing someone on board uh, in any in any fashion. Because what I want is someone to understand how our event as a platform for people and, and their work uh, can can uh, can support others. You know, inspire them, yeah. uh, speak to their ambitions, uh, give them the mm. energy and the 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 permission to pursue something that you know that's inside them uh, but, yes. but they haven't had the, the confidence or the readiness to pursue and that's really you know that's 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 the magic that i try to create each year as and where possible um but yeah having having to skip a year because of uh because of uh dastardly covid we've given you know we've recognized that there's a few things that we want to to improve you know as a an event that's been running for a long time and a lot of that stuff you know from an event organization point of view just runs on autopilot with a small amount of scaling yeah. year and so on but yeah we would really like to focus more on how we onboard and and uh, and mm -hmm. see speakers through from 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 discovery through to through through to everything that happens after the event as well uh, yeah. very untraditionally because a lot of tedx events do care a great deal about um coaching and how things are presented on the day and all of those things we're much more yeah. relaxed in that sense um oh that's I would, good well yes I, I i don't think that um uh, a a well polished talk is the vital ingredient to a good yes. tedx talk um i think you know for most people for most most occasions it will help <laughs> you know yeah. um but really you know the ingredient that you're lo looking for is what's the the message and the lived experience behind that message yeah. um that's really the most important thing uh and you know the most successful talks that we've had uh, on our stage over the last you know half a decade in in my time running it you know some you know last year our greatest talk in terms of what came back from the audience was someone who could you know where 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 you know they'd only started learning to speak english about two or three years prior do you know what i mean you know so so so, mm. the, so their ability to articulate themselves and you know and, and uh you know if you were to watch this talk back you know you have some as an audience member you have some work to do to understand what the message is but because it's yeah. so powerful and because you know this is someone is a uh, someone who is a refugee in this country and their story to, to coming here and the things that they've achieved since you know is remarkable you know yeah. and because you know that that's there like as an audience yeah. member you put you you're ready to put in the work to 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 hear and feel the story and 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 carry its meaning you know onto wherever you want to take it next so yeah um so i don't always feel that you know a good script writing support is more important than you know working out how to to stand up straight and manage the audience and so on if you're not doing yeah it. Um, but in in ted though that's that's one of the challenge which we've got in ted is that you're given only the small space to move around so mm. you're almost tied to that circle mm. of like oh you can't go outside the circle because you go out mm. of the frame and you won't be able to but i've seen ted long tendex london that show was on the stage, but I've seen mm. people move around, and I've seen mm. the famous uh, Tony Robbins talk on TED. He was all over the stage, yeah, <laughs> as well. So, what is the restrictions? Why do they do that? Do, do you know, as a curator, that is it's important, or yeah, well, I think well, really, what these things come down to 
is um you know to show you behind the red curtain or the red dot so to speak is um when you watch a ted ted talk you know that's filmed at one of the the actual ted conferences in canada yeah. or california once a year um you know these are significantly curated and designed events you know so yeah. to the to the extent where um you know you have to take three outfits with you and before you mm. go on stage the the crew will decide which outfit you're going to wear for example you know oh, and okay. um and uh you know and if you if you mess up whilst you're delivering your talk they'll stop you and they'll ask you to go back to a certain point and start again this sort of stuff you know okay. and that's why that's why when you see these these beautifully presented talks uh, they are that way because they are managed meticulously and you know and rehearsed on stage for days before and so on. Um, you know, as a as a as a as a volunteer led not for profit TEDx event, you don't have that level of resource and time and stringency at your disposal. So yeah. you have to think differently and you have to focus on different qualities. Uh, and some TEDx chapters will, of course, want to go down that route and they will push hard on those things uh, and they mm -hmm. will want to coach and they will want to go through your script and approve, you know, it line by line and so on. Um, I very rarely read the scripts um, mm -hmm. and I very rarely, um, you know, this is the first, this next year will be the first year that we have an actual pre-planned rehearsal uh, you know, mm. weeks or months ahead of the event itself, but purely for the opportunity for the speaker to become more confident. It's got nothing to do with me wanting to wow an audience or or deliver the perfect polished talk or yeah. whatever. Like we'll always get we'll always get a couple out of the event, you know, perfectly polished talks. So if Ted wants to go ahead and put something fancy on their website from our event, they're welcome to, and we'll always produce it somehow. But that, yeah. but. But uh, you know, you know, we have nearly twenty performances or talks across in a, a day. Do you know what I mean? If yeah. every single one felt like you were watching something on, you know, Broadway or something with all of this kind of like, sort of like you know, storytelling and wowing and you know, and the same body language that you know that you know everyone comes in and does the Tony Robbins show, like that's going to be very tiring for the audience. Yeah. Um, you know, it might be nice once and it might look good on YouTube, but. You know, it's not good enough. You know, you need to, as a curator, you need to understand what's the journey that the audience is about to go on. And not just from a message yeah. point of view, but from a physical point of view, from an emotional point of view, from, you know, all of those different aspects, you know, and that requires finding people with different approaches to using their body, using their voices, you know, and so on. Um, it's it's a content which makes a difference, isn't it? I mean, I understand what you're saying saying there. It's the content of their story. That what that is the philosophy behind TED Talks uh, is that content. The idea is that is that worth um, spreading so that people other mm. people are getting inspired by that idea mm. and uh, able to take the action. But I see most of them, it could be because one of my friends said, oh, you've been rejected by four, four um, franchises. That's why you don't like TED Talks. That's that's not true. The, the truth is, the truth behind that is, I always say to people, when I go and see some of the TEDx uh, talks, um, it seems more superficial than the idea behind spreading. There are some wonderful talks I've, I've heard, listened to as well. I got a little bit, I've got a love and hate of um, relationship with as Ted. Do, as do I, as do I. <laughs> <laughs> But we're quite, you know, I have to say, like, you know, I, we, we, we and I are quite rebellious with it, you know, in many senses. You know, we don't, you know, we, we uh, don't always go by the book. And I know when, when we go to these TEDx organizer events and stuff, do stick out like a sore thumb sometimes, you know, with our yeah. ideas and ways of doing things. And particularly given the size of the event we are, like, um, uh, you know, I think, I think last year, I remember having this meeting with our team last year where it was just kind of like, 
um, we were trying to work out whether we could or should do something. Um, I can't remember what it was. And then, you know, one of us referred to checking the TEDx guidelines, brand guidelines. And we were like, oh, well, yeah, we haven't done that for a couple of years. We should probably brush up on that. You know? <laughs> and but I know that other people take that sort of stuff very seriously. But, you know, there are there are, you know, the, your your example about staying on the red dot, for example, um, uh, the important what, what the point worth making in that respect is that the reason that you can watch a TEDx talk and it you know and you don't know whether it's from ten years ago or ten weeks ago or whether it's from you know in New York in front of five thousand people or you know some village in Papua New Guinea in front of five people. Do you know what I mean? And quite you know yeah. it, it's the brand guidelines and this and this sort of approach to storytelling and this approach to sharing ideas publicly and so on and just sticking within a handful of parameters allows that brand to be consistent and that's what you know and that's what makes it successful and that's what gives it credibility is its consistency and so you know you do have you know for all of <laughs> for all of my rebellious nature uh, and my um i think that's know, that's my mine as well uh, that i i am a rebel and it's like why should we <laughs> is my yeah. question go on <laughs> but at the same time like you are responsible for something you know what i mean and uh, you're responsible for looking after a brand and you've been entrusted to that you know i've always said that if it was just toby and his mates at the brighton dome like 11 people would come uh, but it's not yeah. it's tedx brighton and that's why we get our audience and that's why you know one of the things that we worry about the least in our event planning is ticket sales whereas if you were running your own uh, branded event that you have owned and built yourself from the from the ground yeah. up you know you would be worried about ticket sales and things yeah. you know and that's the, the privilege of that is that you then get to spend less time worrying about selling tickets and more time worrying about what experience and what story you're going to create on the day yeah. uh, and that's the joy of it and having those guidelines you know and having those 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 sort of train tracks to run in and kind of like these are the colors that you have to use and this is the staging and this is the way that people should speak and you know this is how many people you can have on stage and so on and all that sort of stuff you know if you instead of seeing that as like being policed you just see it as kind of like well that's a decision that i don't have to make you know it's that kind of yeah. like and then you can just relax into it and then when when sp some speaker comes along and says i'm going to use the whole stage you know which inevitably happens and you can be like yeah maybe <laughs> maybe don't maybe just stay on the dock yeah. and they're like no i'm gonna you know i'm such a free spirit man i've got to use the whole stage and they're like okay yeah but no one's gonna want to watch your thing on youtube like you're wasting your, you know, and, and there's no lighting over there. <laughs> so yeah, that's if you true. walk over there, like yeah. no one in the audience can see where what's where you've just gone. Um, so yeah. anyway, these are they're they're there for a reason. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 nice. To, uh, that, uh, that's what I've been convinced of. Um, oh, you've got I sponsored um, one of the franchise um, be one of the sponsor uh, mm. of that franchisee about four years ago. And I've been told all of this, but I was like, oh, it's nice to nice to know that I always do my research before that, though. So now let's come to the speaker selection process that is mm. most important, apart from all these logistics of like how to make it look like and how to make it branded and all of that. Many people would apply and especially for Brighton, TEDx Brighton, it would be more um, application than you've got spaces left out uh, for, mm. for, for speakers. So how do you select those speakers? It seems to be, and I know you've touched this briefly in, in yours, uh, where you talked about this one, one of the speaker from last year um, having a very powerful story uh, to tell. How do, you, how do you make that decision? I know it would be a teamwork, but mm. what are the criteria? Oh, I, this is always a very. I, I put you in the spot. This I is, told you. Told no, it's me. fine. Don't worry. I never mind talking about <laughs> these things. It's just my answer is always terribly unpopular. So, yeah. because um, you know, the application process is a uh, is a tiny, tiny, tiny uh, part of the process of finding mm. these speakers. Um, it, and is it because really, you get more speakers applying? No. It's because, particularly okay. as I've got better at it, it's a much better okay. outbound. It's much more of an outbound exercise. 
So the way that I work is that I come up with a story that I want to tell across the whole day. And then I'll oh. break that up into chapters and then I'll work out, okay, well, what's the story of this chapter and who are the characters that need to play out that story? And ah, and then and then it's much more of an outbound and research led exercise than it is yeah. a waiting for those people to come and land on my lap. Um, so the best speakers that I've found over the last few years have usually been from listening to the radio, reading magazines, reading newspapers. Mm -hmm. um, and I find them, they don't find me. Um, and the people that have been successful in coming in have usually yeah. done so through building a relationship with me first or with any someone yeah. in the team, sorry. Um, yeah. and, and then us identifying that person through our relationship with them as someone that could fulfill that part of the story that we want to tell. Aha, uh -huh. you've solved a big mystery for me. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, and and this is but this is why it's an unpopular answer because people go, yeah. yeah, but how do I become a TEDx speaker? It's like, well, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> how do I, mean? I, I think, become? That's, that's yeah, the what about, question. Like, that asking. all sounds great, Tobes, but what about me? And and mm. so and this is where I you know I struggle because um, because you know I, I I've stopped mincing my words. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, and you know the reality is is that the application process is there so that we can have you know something reliable to look to to be like okay yeah. well you know and as a part of the process you know each TEDx event has to have a theme um and all of the speakers have to, to to somehow represent that theme and for me I, I I don't like to think of it as a theme I like to think of it as a as a story um um but you know do we do we have anyone here that 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 will that will fit? You know these molds that we've already created. Do we have anyone that will fit? Um, and and sometimes the answer is yes, but more often than not, the answer is no. Um, mm -hmm. And that's not the fault of the person applying. Like they don't know the no, story no, we're no, trying no. to tell. I they don't try understand that point. Mm. Um, they don't know the message that we're trying to to convey, and they don't know the qualities that we're looking for. And quite and quite frankly, just like reading people's CVs and so on, there's only so much you can tell from a few bits of words on a on a bit of paper, you know. But if I can spend, you know, half an hour, you know, reading through, you know, you know, two or three interviews that mm -hmm. someone's done with 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 the newspaper or magazine or i can you know spend quarter of an hour listening to them being radio you know interviewed on radio four or something like that like i can get a really good sense of a like their story their background their lived experiences b their ambitions as a person like are they doing mm -hmm. this to be famous and super duper and liked and loved or are they doing this because they've seen some kind of vicious injustice going on in some part of the world or their community and the only way that they can fix it is to try and play their part you know and you know and you know it's taken me a while but like for me i can i can figure that out pretty quickly now but you know i've made mistakes in the past where i've just given the stage to to to, to people that are there for their own benefit and not for the benefit of the audience or 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 the people that they represent uh, and this is why it's so difficult because actually the people that that um pursue it most ferociously tend to be mm -hmm. you know the, the 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 least desirable profile of a person oh. to, to put on stage right so so my first advice that i give anyone when they're like how do i go to tedx talk i'm like stop wanting to do it yes uh, stop wanting that. You know there are countless. Yeah, I've stopped of... two years ago. Don't get me wrong, I've stopped mm. <laughs> because but, I thought, okay, I've got to pay my path. It's it's just not working. But there, there, there's countless <laughs> events. There's countless events and conferences that people can be can be going to and and and, and using to to, yeah. to share their ideas and share their stories. And and realistically, like. I don't need you to be an experienced or, uh, you know, near perfect speaker, uh, but I want to be able to get an idea of how you're going to present yourself because then I yes. know how much work is required to get you to a place where you're going to feel comfortable and confident as, you know, as you, as, as one can be going onto that stage. And, you know, cause it's, you know, it's, it's part theater and it's part conference and it's not like walking, 
into a into a you know a room at the at the Hyatt Hotel or something in yeah. front of a bunch of people and going, okay, well, this is my business and this is what I do and this is how I'm going to help you. You know, um, it's not that, and it's but it's but it's also um, it's it's a it's a slight stride towards drama and performance and theatre and particularly in our venue, which is a theatre. Mm. Um, um, and it's just you on this, you know, looking into into a completely blacked out audience. Do you know what I mean? And yes. and, and then these huge theatre lights beaming down on you, and you've got mm. to remember your lines. And yeah. it's this. It's not the same. It's just not the same. Yeah. So so I need to be able to figure out from 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 either engaging with someone you know outside passi passively that, from outside yeah. yeah as a as a as a, as an audience member myself how is this person going to present themselves uh, mm. and what's what's what are they what are the what do they have in mind for the audience what do they want the audience yes. to take away what perspective shift are, are they are they trying to trying to create for the people watching and listening that's what i need to figure wow. out quickly really you you i completely understand even just i i don't run or curate um direct or curate uh, a tedx event but just being doing this expert interview series for last three seasons i have come to that same conclusion this makes me more understanding of mm -hmm. the hard work you guys put outside you've been thinking about this all throughout the year not just just that part when you're doing hosting the event that makes it so much easier to get oh yeah this is how they do it and my love affair um i've told you about the hate side of it but my love affair with ted started in 2000 i think it was a very small event it wasn't a big event it was a ted event not the tedx event when i was working for sun microsystems in uh, uh, san francisco uh, and was like i've been dragged uh, to this event or oh, someone is talking i always <laughs> loved talking uh, so yeah come along because it's those tickets are given to the tech companies for people to attend so it was like okay yeah go for it and uh, i went i was in awe you must say i was in awe would I be ever able to talk like that? That's that's mine. It's not about me selling my business, me selling my idea, me selling my story. I didn't know about that. But I was like, would I ever be able to talk like that person who is on that stage was my awe uh, aspect mm. of all of this. So that is it's it's almost 20 year um process, I must say. But anyway, one day, one day, one day. Um so tell me tell me now that i've heard about your process and i get it completely and i think i've satisfied many of it and satisfied my um questions as well now i want to talk to you about how did you what is the connection between your content club your poster works as a new software company and ted where, where is the connection mm -hmm. or is it just you're doing it and also you're a youth worker aren't you well, so interesting. How, how does this all mix? <laughs> I'm always a person who thinks there should be a connection for everything. There's a golden thread. Yeah, there is, and <laughs> um, yeah, and I pay people handsomely to help me figure out what that what what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, um, uh, well, first of all, I think you know one thing that's worth I've only just acknowledged with myself recently is actually the thing that I've been doing the longest is TEDx. Um, um, you know, I, I started volunteering for TEDx Brighton in twenty uh, in, in two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Um, and actually, back then, I didn't even know what it was. Uh, I won uh, 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 like a social social innovation incubator type thing uh, yeah. for a for a food box uh, project. I had oh. I had started. Uh, and a part of the prize was the opportunity to exhibition in what was called the Ideas Lab at TEDx Brighton, uh, which was um, now in its second or third no, year, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I was invited to join uh, one of the early team meetings as a part of the, the winner of that thing. 
uh, and they introduced me and here's Toby he does this food box thing and he's won the thing to take part in the in the exhibition at TEDx and everyone was like oh hi Toby congratulations and then they're going around and they're doing all those things that now I do which is kind of like so how are we going to do the speaker planning and how are we going to get sponsorship and how are we going to do the venue and all this sort of thing and then they came to the exhibition part of their agenda and they were like right so um so we need to organize an exhibition. And everyone was like, yes, we need to organize an exhibition. And I'm like, who would like to organize the exhibition? And no one put their hand up. No one wants that. Oh, job. no. It's not, it's not a sexy <laughs> pet job, you see what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> so, so they're all went quiet. And then I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll organize the exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> oh bless you <laughs> so i went from i went from being in the exhibition to to organizing yeah. the exhibition in in in, in, a, in a in a heartbeat um uh and yeah and the rest is kind of history so i did i did i organized the exhibition for a couple of years for the first three years of me doing that i didn't even watch one talk i was just the other side of the door the whole time looking after my exhibitors and, and so on uh, you know, and I love that because, you know, that was a proper kind of like soapbox platform for local businesses, local charities, local inventors yes. and stuff. And just like, you know, and, and having worked in the exhibition trade anyway, like, you know, there's such a financial barrier to entry to, to take your products and your services and your business to the sorts of events where you can ex you can exhibit in that way. Right. To that many people. Okay. So the idea of being able to, you know, do that as a rather than who can afford to exhibit here like who do i think you know yeah. is worth is worth having a platform um so going around and talking to all the local startups and all of the kind of like incubators or you know startup labby type things and all of the local charities and stuff and be like how do sorry i'm gonna be cold at the moment like how would you how would oh, you cool. use this and how do we connect you with you know and so on and just I, 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 you know it was such a an important part of my startup journey myself because I was still working full time for a relatively sizable organization back then and yeah and and this was my little side hustle was the TED thing and um and just putting this exhibition together for for a couple of years and then um some of the guys that were then doing the director directorship stuff decided to stand down and that was my and they were like we're either just gonna skip a couple of years or or uh or or if you know, if you want to take it over that that would be cool <laughs> so oh, that's that's so I really like, okay. i would have jumped on that opportunity as well because well, you know sometimes yeah, you've got to do it for the community. And actually don't have time it is to do it's it. not easy yeah it's no, not I easy don't... always but you would like oh community will benefit because of this yeah. would, would, well the, would be a driver the, the the dirty secret behind it all is i actually do it with my my mother and she she's <laughs> she's the uh i want to hear the, this cause, story cause the, 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 yeah the condition was if i take it over then my mum has to help because she'd done all the uh because i remember complaining to her the year before and going oh there's no one to do the end of year accounts or whatever it is no one's doing this in the spreadsheet and everyone's getting really stressed because she goes well i'll help out i'll help out with the you know getting oh, the spreadsheet well, ready and stuff and so on <laughs> and everyone was like so bowled over by my mum's willingness and capability to help. Yeah, of course. Um, and she's she's a very, I mean, you know, she's mum. My mum isn't uh, is 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 nothing to be taken lightly. You know, she she was before she retired a very senior director at a, at a very large national charity, and she knows she knows her stuff. Do you know what I mean? So yes. Um, um. So she was more than capable of carrying, you know, uh, a group oh. of twenty something year old boys through this process of organizing this event you know what i mean so oh, um very nice yeah so now so the yes yeah, so the, the, the condition was like toby you can organize it but your mum has to carry on helping <laughs> 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 because i'm 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 bloody useless do you know what i mean i'm such a i'm so poorly organized as a person i'm all over the place with that stuff but you know i i i i, I, yeah. I know a good person and a good idea when i see it and and i and i do everything i can to support uh, bringing that to to, to life uh, and you ask what the golden thread is across all of those things it's that um, yeah so so you know that's something i can do but you know can i can i uh can i muddle my way through the budget of a you know a 50k plus uh, event no <laughs> <laughs> i Not understand anymore, that yeah. completely i i am one of those people as well i am i can be a control freak 
the organization i i do map out everything but and someone has to take it like implementation of that plan has to be done in in such a way not from from my head it should be from someone otherwise i would make everyone just scream their head off uh, maybe it wouldn't be a very good yeah, process I, I'm great confident that i'm awful to work with confident <laughs> deeply confident um, it's, it's i have oh, i've been told many times that i am a bully uh, <laughs> i am um i am a b word and all of that i've been called many many names but I'm i just not think bothered. people i, I, I do think, have a uh, people come to realize that i'm hopeless and that i can't do any of the things that i say i'm going to do <laughs> <laughs> and this is why you need a wonderful team of volunteers around you yeah that's 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 what i always say i've got to build the team and the manager of the team should be someone else not me yeah. because it would not work that way I, i'm okay to an extent as a team player but ah managing the team is not my cup of tea so you have this you've got this con content club what does mm. the content club do now it's about well, you well I used, to, i used to run a marketing agency called yappa um and um ah. and we started content club um me and my business partner at the time started content club as our sort of community marketing thing that we ran alongside uh, the agency um uh somewhere along the line the agency merged with another agency and we got he sort of got bit, a bit of it bought out um and that mm. didn't go particularly well <laughs> um so so after some some time we decided to exit from the agency and just focus on content club and um, yeah. i've now i now run that myself my my business partner stepped out um uh two years ago now um okay. so i've just focused on running that as a consultant you can't be that useless if you're running that by yourself now <laughs> you're just being modest you you you've got to you've got to have that mainly but anyway so we won't we won't delve, delve into the details of that because i'll embarrass myself but uh but yeah so it, it's it's been it's 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 uh it's it's great i don't think i could ever do anything different now i mm. i love working i love working for myself and i and i like being able to to control my destiny in that respect um i i've um you know the the i'm very picky about the clients that i work with these days as well which is something that uh i've really enjoyed learning to do <laughs> because yeah. because i just used to say yeah i still do say yes to everyone in in some some form um but in oh, terms of actually sort of taking people on and 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 taking them seriously as a, as a as a client and so on like i've got much better at going okay well this is who i work with and this is you know and so on so um and, and yeah increasingly that's become all around the focus of the company is all around building uh, individuals within organizations into content creators so wow um, that's, that's good yeah well i i'm a big believer in people buying from people and the bigger the brand yeah. becomes and the bigger the organization becomes the harder that becomes and um uh, and most of the brands that i'm working with right now are ones that have been uh um and i hope they don't mind me saying this but like hiding behind their brand for too long yeah and they need to learn and they know that they they want to need to learn how to allow individuals within the business to, to be able to step forward and become you know the the, the face of that and they need to be yes. able to do that they, you know and there's a a culture of a confidence part to that and then there's a sort of like a a, a process and machine and mechanics way of doing that as well so that's my yeah, focus that's, now that's always I, i i completely agree with you on that point i i mean i've been agreeing with you most of the point because it it kind of works out in my way that's that's how i do things as well so people brands have become very um I mean they need to have that human element the only human element which you can do is telling the story through the content which they can put, mm. put forward mm. so who better can tell that story apart from their employees or the people who are mm. working within the brand yeah. um makes a lot lot of difference so tell me a little bit about your youth 
club um, or do, do you'd send <laughs> uh, your yeah, morning so, off it. So, so you so seem I, to have quite a few balls you're juggling there. I want to yeah. know how you're juggling. You can't be, it could be that is the reason you've got quite a, you, you must be a very good time manager or know how to delegate things. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I'd like to describe it as some sort of secret sauce, but I think the fact is that I'm perpetually saving myself from imminent failure. So uh, I can't really sort of um, uh, wave any great Stop. flag. That's right. I can't really sort of, and I would never ever encourage anyone to, to try and work the same way that I do. But what, what, I, what I would say is that I'm just very good at not doing things that I don't enjoy doing. Um, mm. um, you know, which is why most of my uh, accounts are late. <laughs> but you know, eventually, my accountant would, would would be agreeing with you on that one. Yeah, oh God, my accountant from is, 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 is I'd, I'd honestly like in terms of people that don't like working with me. I'm sure the accountant is top of the list. But um, yeah. but yesterday you know, I told the same thing to to a friend of my uh, the guest who is coming next week. My accountant hates me and loves me because I pay him. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> go on sorry yeah but 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 yes it is very much that so but i'm very good at just sort of not doing things that i don't like to do and and i think that's a big part of you know of me being being an entrepreneur and, and running my own my own organization is because um because i have no no intention of of, of doing as i'm told so um so the part of that is that you know I, I, I you know I try and in terms of managing my own time, I just try to make sure that the the days or half days are well allocated to certain projects and I, I, I my brain separates things out into into you know projects, products, and and, and partnerships. Yeah. Uh, so for example, the youth work that you've described, you know, is that's for me that's a partnership. You know, so I I, I make sure that that. When my when I compartmentalize my life into when I'm working on things like today's a partnership day or something like that, you know what I mean? So yes. Um, um, so whereas mostly a content club thing or a poster thing is a product. So that's you know, and that's if I have a product day, then I then I work on those things. Um, uh, so it's simply that. But but the, the the youth work side of things, I can't really take any credit for anything that happens because I I I, I ride on the shoulders of giants in that respect. But my 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 girlfriend and the mother of my child um she she uh started oh. and runs a charity called the hummingbird project um which is okay. a youth refugee charity which originally started um gosh five years ago um okay. uh, delivering delivering aid into the refugee camps in calais so she would she would um go out almost weekly and and take more people and and stuff out every week and eventually grew into uh, a one of the largest building projects in the in the camping calais and then b uh, she she then turned her focus to working exclusively with with young unaccompanied people in the in the, in the refugee camps so you know oh, mostly yeah. mostly mostly children under age of sort of 18 19 that were there on their own um uh yeah and and after two years of that, the refugee camp was demolished and she moved all of those services over to the UK. So, and has spent the last three years professionalizing as a charity in providing really specialist services to, to young unaccompanied uh, refugee uh, children in, in, in the UK. So, and one of our services, because it's, it, it's sort of four or five service core services uh, that the charity provides is, is a young leaders program. And we built that together on the back of TEDx Brighton. So we sort of originally sort of formed it as a partnership between TEDx Brighton and, and the charity, uh, and working with sort of a handful of, of young people to help them tell their stories and develop their confidence and so on. And that's since gone on to work with dozens of young people, and they've won a parliamentary award for their work last year. And wow. and and yeah, and it's become. Uh, very politically involved um, because that's sort of how we have seen best chances of making the sort of the law legal changes and the social changes and the and the public perception changes that we need to is by tackling at the heart of government and parliament. So prior to lockdown, we were we were going to parliament quite a lot with that and taking young people yeah. there and getting them getting 
really changing the way that that uh, refugee issues are discussed within Parliament by making sure that young people with lived experience of refugee issues are there having those yes. conversations. So it's not us, the sort of the the, the sort of you know the sort of uh, 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 privileged white people there, you know, having those conversations. It's you know it is a you know seventeen year old lad from Afghanistan or something that's spent two years walking across Europe there having the conversation with the with the MP or with the policymaker or whatever around how we make this how we make things better for them. So that's been a big Ooh. part of, of that. And I, know, I need to get you um next year there is a new podcast which is some feel good causes is the name mm. of the it's more of I wanted to highlight the the charity organizations who mm. are doing the real change making I, I'm not saying <laughs> other charities are not doing the real change i've got to be very very careful in uh, in in addressing yes, this well, one. some, are, some um, are better placed for those things than others yeah yeah there, there are things and i'm i'm getting associated with one of the children's um charity so i i need to get you and your wife um on on the show um to talk about your charity that seems well very I, I increasingly um you know the the objective is actually not for us to speak about anything at all you know it's to to, yeah, to allow young people and that's our thing you know yeah. that's really i've made the mistake now of going to particularly like sector specific conferences and trying to trying to tell people about what we do yeah. and it never feels right and you know and that's, we're now in a position true. where where you know the the, the 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 particularly the graduates is, that have come through our program like they're so they're so well placed now and they're so experienced and they're so skilled in in this you know and um my my voice in particular is is, is never any substitute and i i i, I when I first started doing that, I was trying to, you know, I was always trying to, as because that's just my Humbling. sort of my sort of exuberant nature is to go and tell everyone everything about everything. Do you know what I mean? And <laughs> um, uh, whereas now I've I've had to learn and to enjoy stepping step back, back and stepping and, out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and letting letting the person who experienced talk about that. That's that that mm. is one of the things which I have in mind as well because not many case studies and the the real stories are coming out of charities because of yeah. this element. Yeah, right? like founders well, or exactly. uh, someone talking about this rather than coming it from from the the experience point of view. Brilliant. Really, I'm so grateful for you to come on the show, and I've learned so much uh, about about things and uh, how I'm I'm not the only one, weird one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not the only, only one. Not, I'm, the, I'm the only only one who is like everywhere and not and everyone thinks, oh, I'm very organized. Uh, 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 no, <laughs> I'm not. We're, we're swamped. I'm everywhere. Our legs, seriously. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. I always say that. I always say that. Oh, thank you very much. I'm so grateful for, for you to come on the show and talk about all the projects which you are up to and answering some of the questions. It it kind of makes it, lot clearer on my head even from one hour ago I had I was writing the questions was like just stop writing the question just ask <laughs> the questions which is in their head uh, so that made it so much so this is going to be fun questions it's not uh, it's rapid fire uh, round um it, it's nothing personal okay it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you it's it's been fun throughout I loved it but I wanted to ask you, are you, whenever I ask this question, people, are you a coffee or a tea person? Uh, coffee, but I very unusually have a cup of chamomile tea on my desk right now. But that never, that's a very rare occurrence. And it's only because I've had okay. too much coffee today. So. Okay. Okay. That, that, that kind of gives the personality out as well. So thank you very much. <laughs> Second one, are you a book person or let's let's go to a restaurant or let's go to a party kind of person? Uh, oh, if there's any opportunity to go to a restaurant, I'll take it. Um, but increasingly trying to be a book person, but you oh. know, trying and trying, trying and trying and doing are two different things, aren't they? So 
Yeah, that's 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 what that's why I insisted on that phrase, trying to be. So how many books do you read? Trying to be a reader. Uh, I'm very good at reading half a book and then moving on to the next one. Um, so you've uh, got to get on the audible one, Toby. I'm no, no, I don't, I, I don't. I can't. My my partner is constantly listening to Audible, and um, no, for me, I I I have to. I, if I'm if I want to learn, I, I have to read. I enjoy reading books. I really, really do. Ah. Um, but I also feel like I'm, you know, I. I've got this constant sort of feeling of like I know better. So I get halfway through a book and I'm either like, yeah, cri- cool, got it, thanks. <laughs> and, uh, but just, interestingly, I'm, recently, I'm I, in I, my head. Yeah, go on. Well, I was going to say, I, I recently picked up two books um, and one called um, This Could Be Our Future. The name of the author, I forget, but it, the author is someone that founded Kickstarter. Uh, and then there's another, and then another book that I was reading in parallel called Change Everything, um, and they're they're very much about the same thing. You know, Similar, it's challenging, yeah. challenging the sort of uh, our preconceptions of of whether capitalism is a good thing and what the future and what the world looks like and so on if we were to do things differently. So my hair is a atrocity at the moment. Well, that's okay. Six months of of cutting my own hair, and and uh, and interestingly, they talked about very similar things. Uh, proposing very similar ideas. I hated one and loved the other. Um, why? And if they are I doing think, both, are doing the same. Why? What mm, do you that difference? Yes, exactly. Why? And and I've, I've <laughs> I really enjoyed figuring out why. There's something because, wrong. There's something wrong with you, Toby. But this is but this is thing. I think it comes down to um, you know connecting with the author and the content creator. And this yeah. is why I've sort of like come to really really believe in this stuff that I'm doing at the moment with Content Club around putting the person at the front of the message because. The message changes, it, you know, regardless of whether it's trying to achieve the same thing. The message changes depending on who's telling it. And, yes. And um, and what I realised is that I didn't like the author of the book. I liked the idea and I liked the concept, but I didn't like the author. And uh, and then when I picked up this other book that just so happened to be almost exa- about the exact same thing, but pre- just presented it in such a way that that wore much more humility that used lived experience over you know data and research you know that that you know presented thoughtful questions rather than kind of gave instructions do you know what i mean and um and i started to really you know it was a really it was a really eye-opening exercise in kind of like figuring wow. out how to how do you find your voice like that even in writing um Ooh. or maybe especially in writing um, yeah, I've, you you've made me curious about reading these two ones as well. May, maybe listening to these two ones because that makes it a lot lot more sense because I'm maybe. listening to something every day. Uh, so, thank you very much for coming on uh, and really answering all my questions. And sometimes it was like, what she asking would have been uh, in your head as well. And uh, <laughs> what made me realize uh, is that if I am going to interview myself, how would it be? Um, and you, you've almost <laughs> said the same because this is how I talk. I, I was like, the way I present myself is a little bit more, what do you say, unorganized or you were more organized, I must say. Uh, you were more organized in answering the question I would have uh, eliminated the half part, second part of it. I would start with something and then would have gone to another tangent. So it was so really eye opening. And I say, God, I loved every bit of it. Thank you very much. And thank you. Uh, I will get you on the show on the other other show, and we can discuss the logistics of that later. Okay. And uh, thanks for your time. Uh, thank you. And it's again. Uh, so much insightful and please do put your um links through or give it to me i will i will put it as a comment and uh, i'm so grateful i don't know how to express that great gratefulness (laughs) but (laughs) but i'm so so grateful yes thank you very much i've had a lovely time thank you so much you too uh, th- thank you. Ha- Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. If you are not <laughs> yes, talking and all of that. <laughs> See ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for listening to my yapping. And I was so enamored uh, by the interview and by by 
to be frank with, I don't get anyone um, if I've not spoken to them before. Toby is one such exception where I've not spoken to him. This was the first time we are speaking, just a few minutes before the interview, he came online and then we had a quick conversation, which is, which almost highlights my control freak um, of how I control the whole thing. Or like, I want to tell them everything, uh, how I behave and the way. And he was such a sport to come online and put, put up with my questions. It's like, my questions is everywhere. And when I get excited, I am everywhere as well. So I hope I've asked all the questions you've asked me. Some of my friends, if you're not, you will make me know. <laughs> um, and thank you very much for your time. And if you've got any other questions, please do drop in your questions. I will ask Toby and he would be the expert of TEDx. Or if you want to ask him about his other work of content club or poster works or his youth center, please do uh, ask me, ask those questions as well. He would be happy to answer. I will make him answer. That's, that's, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm just joking, Toby, Not, nothing serious here thank you very much and i'll see you all in the next event the next one is with, about pricing strategy for the service owners and as well as the service businesses thank you very much and i'll see you all in the next episode bye for now